as we shed a collective tear for the retirement of one of the most popular SATA SSDs to ever exist, the Taco Returns. What's that? You mean the taco I talked about back in what, like 2022? Right at the height of the pie shortages? Yeah, there were so many cool compute module boards coming out back then, and I just stopped talking about them for a while because what good is a wacky board like this without the computer that makes it run? Well, times have changed. You can get the compute modules now. Well, at least the CM4. The CM5 is still slowly rolling out, but with it you get more I.O., a faster CPU, and well, it might actually be the perfect showcase for the dying tech that is SATA. So I'm going to quickly build up a Pi NAS with this thing to see if it's worth it in 2024. So not a whole lot has changed since the first version. I had like a beta version. This is the V1.4 from 2023-05-06. So this uh, design is a year or two old now, and they actually make it work with the CM5, the Radsa CM5, and the Pi CM5, I think. We'll see in just a second. Uh, but it has space for the compute module right here. It has an E key slot, M.2 slot, and an M key slot. So you could put an NVMe SSD up here and a Wi-Fi card or something like that. Uh, and then it also has a lot of other things up here. It has a, a holder for an RTC battery. It has a fan plug, but it's only two pins, so there's no PW PWM control. There's a 12-volt power header here. I don't know if that's for input or output, um, but maybe maybe either way. Then there's a barrel jack, that's what I'll be using today uh, for 12 volt power input. There's a power button, which I presume works with the CM4. I haven't tested that on this particular board. I just got this in the mail. Uh, then there's USB 2, HDMI. This would probably be USB 3 if they routed the pins for the CM5 to it, but USB 2 is fine. And there's another button down here. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, then there's a little header here. I'm not sure what that's for either. Oh, and I think I already broke that header just by lifting it up. <laughs> oh, there, it goes down. Uh, and there's also a slot for a micro SD card for a light compute module. So the, the top side has a lot going on already. And then you flip it over, and there's uh, five SATA plugs. And the, these have power and data. So you can take an SSD, like this uh, MX500, which is now retired, and you can just plug it into one of these. And now you have a hard drive plugged in. So you can even do 3.5 inch drives. I don't know if they fit directly on this board. I can go get one and find out. If I put this on here. Oh, I really mangled this one. This, uh, uh, it looks like it's a little too wide. So this won't fit uh, 3.5 inch drives out of the box. Uh, that's uh, that's one, one thing that if they made this board a little bit longer, went down to four ports, they could probably do that, and this could be like a backplane and an ass. But at this point, you could only use this one on the outermost uh, plug here. So you could have a hard drive and four SSDs or four 2.5-inch drives. Um, so this is really meant for smaller things like SSDs, SATA SSDs. And you can plug in up to five of them, which is nice. If you're going to build a little NAS with redundancy, uh, you want to have that. So here's an 8 terabyte Samsung, one of the ones that I used on that original Taco. Uh, there's a 128 gig that I pulled out of a, of a Dell XPS 13. I think that might actually be like a little M.2 SATA drive in an adapter board. And we'll plug in the Crucial right here. So, yeah, okay. And uh, somebody 3D has a 3D printed case for these. You can see they have a little stance to them. They're not all perfectly aligned out of the box, but uh, somebody has a 3D print that will hold this all up a little nicer. Uh, but just for testing, I just do that. You know, that works, all right? Uh, you can also put little standoffs in. Uh, there's four mounting holes in here, so you could put standoffs and have it stand up like this uh, a little more safely. But I'm going to plug those in. Whoa. I'm going to put this compute module on here. Let's see if it just boots up. This is a light compute module with no EMMC, so I have I have a micro SD card with a boot OS. I don't know if I have the firmware set for this to use uh, NVMe or not. The other thing I wonder, this I think uses an Asmedia, let's see, it's the ASM1805 or 1806, which I believe is compatible with the Pi's bootloader to let it boot off an M key drive. And I just am also realizing they don't include an M.2 uh, screw on here or an E key screw. So I'm going to grab one of those. M2.5. 
This is very janky. If you're going to build one of these permanently, you should probably do it a little bit more robust than what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to see what works. So let's get this plugged in over here. Pardon my huge mess. Well, before I do power, in case everything explodes, let's get everything else plugged in. So there's 2.5 gigabit ethernet and one gigabit ethernet. Uh, I don't know what chipset that is, but we can check when it boots up, hopefully. Uh, let me grab HDMI just so we can see if there's monitor output. And then this is a 12 volt, uh, how many amps do I have here? Oh, it's 19 volt. You know what? I might want to use uh, the proper adapter here. This might blow this thing up. Be sure that your adapter is using the right uh, voltage because that uh, I could have just fried this thing. An actual 12 volt adapter. This is 12 volts, 8 amp, which is probably overkill for this setup. Well, here goes nothing. I plugged it in. I don't see any LEDs. Oh, there's an LED on the NVMe drive. So we know that at least is working. Oh, and there are, there's one red LED on the bottom. Maybe that's like it's powered off. Let me press the power button. That didn't seem to do anything. And we're not getting any HDMI output. It's saying it's using 13.4 watts right now. So something's happening on here. The SOC is slightly warm. Let's, uh, let's check if I see it on the network. Maybe HDMI just doesn't work. All right, well, that didn't seem to work. So I'm going to try a Compute Module 4 instead. It's hot. I mean, it was definitely doing something. It just didn't get like a network connection or who knows what was going on there. Okay, we're plugged in. Power. There's still just that red LED. Oh, I'm getting, now I'm getting a signal on the monitor and I'm getting ethernet lights. So something's funny with the CM5 on this board, at least for the time being. Let's see if this boots up though. So I'm in on the taco, let's say uh, LSPCI, and it has a uh, Gen 2 packet switch ASM 1806. So I think that's the same one that it's always had, but it, you can see there's the uh, SATA controller right here, uh, ethernet controller, RTL 8125 2.5 gigabit, and then there's an NVMe, and uh, but I don't think, uh, let's see, LSPLK. Yeah, we're not booting off of the NVMe drive, we're booting off the micro SD card slot. But we can see there's already, here's the SDA, SDB, SDC, and SDD, so the, the four hard drives. And uh, just to test the throughput on here, I'm going to say, I'm going to plug in, let's see, I'll exit here. I'm going to plug the, the cable into the 2.5 gig port and see if that's working out of the box. Yeah, it looks like that is working. So here's ETH1. If I say sudo ETH tool ETH1, I am getting 2.5 gigabits. So let's say sudo apt install iperf3. And then on my computer, I'm going to say iperf3-s to set up an iperf server. And on here, we can connect to it and see what speed we're getting. So it's getting a little less than 2 gigabits per second, which is less than it should be. And I wonder if there's an issue with the PCIe packet switching or what, uh, but that should be higher. Let's try it in reverse. So we're getting packets from my Mac, and that's a little slower. There, there are some issues on the CM4 with this in terms of the bandwidth that you'll get out of it. Um, so that is an issue, uh, but let's format one of these drives and check the speeds on it. So while it's formatting it, you can see that there's actually uh, status LEDs for each drive up there. And uh, they blink when there's activity, and they stop blinking when there's not. It doesn't seem like there's any other LEDs on the... T well, I'm calling this the top of the board, but this might be the bottom. But there's no LEDs on there. There's just the one... Well, there's, uh, I guess it's a reddish, amberish LED up there. So the board doesn't have a whole lot of status information besides those uh, fairly bright blue LEDs for the, the drives themselves. Okay, so this is my disk benchmark utility, and it's going to download and install IOZone, which is a nice way to benchmark the real-world performance of a formatted disk in Linux. So I just want to see with the SATA drives how fast they will be uh, on here. And sorry about the 
air conditioning or heating system that's uh, this is what you get on the second channel so iozone i have set to do a read and write test for a gigabyte worth of data at 4k and one megabyte so we'll see how fast that goes on uh, this uh, crucial so power monitoring with uh, four drives it looks like it's using about 13 watts when it's doing a benchmark with one drive so I'd say probably anywhere between 10 to 20 watts is what you'd be looking at with normal SATA SSDs. So it looks like we're getting about uh, 300 to 340 megabytes per second uh, read and write speeds with this, which checks out for this SSD. Uh, the NVMe should get a little bit faster, but this is on the CM4, so the, the fastest the bus can go anyway is, uh, you know, four, maybe 400, 420 megabytes per second. The one issue with this board is uh, if I go to LSPCI, this uh, particular switch is PCI Gen 2. So you're not going to get any faster speeds on the CM5 for I.O., disk I.O., uh, but it will be able to handle moving packets around the system a little bit faster. Uh, but this is a limitation. If they made a TACO version 2 with the PCI Gen 3 switch, you would get uh, a good deal more performance out of everything, out of the 2.5 gigabits, out of the SATA, out of the NVMe drive. Um, so that is one thing that they could improve if they do a new generation TACO, uh, maybe also make a version that could be swapped out in old NAS enclosures. That'd be really cool. You could put one of these in and have an upgradable NAS. I'm gonna try one more time switching back to, uh, let me turn this off. I'm gonna try switching back to the CM5 and see what happens here. Uh, the board is getting pretty hot. You probably, whew, you probably wanna have active cooling going on. <laughs> uh, you probably want to have a fan somewhere because every part of this thing is, is warm. Ooh, everything is very hot on here. I'm definitely seated correctly. Let's try this again and, and see what happens. There's power to this board, but it's not booting up the Pi for some reason. Not 100% sure why on that, but uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll post on the Raspberry Pi PCI Express site about this, and we'll see if anybody can get this running with a CM5. So the TACO. Uh, this could be the last hurrah of SATA SSDs, uh, something like this. It seems like it might make sense, but I can't get it to work with the Compute Module 5, at least not yet. So um, like I said, check out the Pi PCI Express uh, website. That's where I do all my work on these wacky devices. And uh, if you want one of these for a CM4, it's still a viable option for that. Although I still stand by my ultimate Pi NAS being the ultimate Pi NAS uh, at this point with the Pi 5 and the Penta SATA hat. Uh, I think that somebody will design a little NAS like this, a, a board that maybe could even retrofit an old NAS enclosure so you could have like, like hot swap bays and things. Uh, but until that time, this is not a bad option if you have a RADSA CM5 or a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. And uh, who knows, maybe they'll find a way to get the CM5 working on here. Anyway, uh, I need to do a thumbnail picture for this, so I will probably do something like uh, that. No, my head is stuck behind it. Maybe I'll do it over here. Or, or like this. Thumbnails are one of the most annoying parts of YouTube, but it's a necessary part of YouTube. But uh, watch what I can do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this up here in the light so that it's uh, visible. Like that. And then if I drop this down... It focused on me. And now I will... I can Photoshop those two things together. We'll see if that makes a good thumbnail. I don't know. 